This is a 2004 Suzuki Jimny, a real life toy car. It's one of the world's smallest and most affordable SUVs on the market. It's 3.6 meters long, 1.6 meters wide, and only 1.7 meters tall. It's absolutely tiny. And for the next 24 hours, I'm in the beautiful countryside of Surrey, and I'm gonna be taking this thing out, testing out what it's like to drive. Oh, look at that. Oh, sugar. Mighty. And then tonight, I'm going to be attempting to camp inside. Oh my god. Oh my god. A 4x4 Suzuki Jimny, a vehicle that I personally think I might want to get next. So I cannot wait to take this for a drive, test it out tonight to see if I can actually squeeze in here and fit and just to have some fun in it. Can you shut the door or not? <laughs> Your head's poking out. Watch my head. Here we go. The Jimny, the first little drive. Oh God, this is such a funny little vehicle. It honestly looks and feels like a toy car. Hold on Ben, I've just broken his windscreen wiper. Already I can tell this is going to be a very different drive to other vehicles I've driven before. I've been told about the experience of driving a Jimny and in a matter of about two minutes I can fully understand what I've been told because it's certainly very different. Oh, I'm revving the hell out of this thing. Okay, the steering lock on this is not as good as I was expecting. The nice thing is, it is a very small car, which I love. And the fact that this is four by four, I think is absolutely brilliant. It is so bloody twitchy. Every time you go over a little bump or a lump in the road, Oh, those brakes! Yeah, 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 yeah. The Jimny was actually launched back in 1970, so they've been around for years. And the one I'm driving today... Ooh, sounds quite nice. It's actually from 2004. As always with these videos, a massive thank you to this week's owner of the Jimny. Whoa! Who is Gary? If you guys want to check him out, check out his YouTube and his social media links. I will leave a link in the description. He's actually done an entire video showing the conversion of this chimney and then into a camper. Oh, look at that. Oh, sugar ticks mighty. So Gary, the owner, did warn me about that that apparently these vehicles really struggle with something called death wobble. And it's literally where the steering wheel just completely twitches and takes over itself. and looks like the steering wheel's having a fit. I genuinely feel as if this thing is literally just driving itself. It's got a mind of its own. We're currently sat at the traffic lights in the beautiful town where I grew up. In Dorkin. doesn't belong in a supermarket car park whatsoever. Oh, what's that? I've made it. My first voyage in a Jimny. Success. As always, I've asked you guys for some recipes to start cooking in these videos because I want to try something different and something new and to attempt to cook them in these different vehicles. So, Julie Parham has sent in a paella recipe. So tonight, I'm gonna to attempt to be cooking a Spanish paella outside in the chimney. Oh, mate, oh, the hate bloody hate shopping. Can't be arsed with it. Risotto rice. Two small onions. Uh, garlic cloves. A bit of garlic. Early leaf parsley, 60p, lovely. Chicken breast, that'll do. Saffron. Bloody moron. There's nothing in it. How much is it? <laughs> £3.15 for like some toenails of saffron. Food is acquired. 
get back in the jimmy, take it for more of a little bit of a test drive around the countryside-ish, and then find a park up for tonight. We're gonna head to tonight's park up, which is a place that I've been to before, and some of you I'm sure will recognize. We have arrived at tonight's park up, which is a place I'm very familiar with. Right at the bottom of Leith Hill, surrounded by trees and rhododendron bushes. Is that even a thing, rhododendron bushes? Who bloody knows? We're gonna jump inside, give you guys a bit of a tour and show you exactly how I'm gonna be camping in this. At the front of this van, my favorite feature on any 4x4 is a snorkel. And no, a snorkel is not going for underwater. It's for dust, so that all of the dust doesn't get sucked into your engine. It gets blown in here and then blown out. At the top of the van, at the front, we've got a roof rack. We've got probably a 20 to 30 inch light bar and also some LED spotlights at the back. What the hell did he call those things on top? Those plates, those mud. Uh... We've got some mud things. I can't remember what you call them. Things that help you get out of the mud when you're stuck, that you put on the ground and you drive over to unstick yourself. Of course, if you've got yourself a little four x four chimney, you need to get yourself some big bad boy all-terrain tires, which I think is the biggest reason why this car looks so epic because the tires are massive and the body of the vehicle is absolutely tiny. There's not a huge amount else going on on the outside, so we're gonna jump inside and I'm gonna show you how I'm gonna convert this into my home for the night. Gary did show me how to set this all up earlier, but no doubt, I'm sure I've forgotten. On the back window, we've got a nice little curtain, which of course I'll use tonight to stop any perverts looking in. So like some of the other smaller vehicles that I've done so far, the VW Caddy, the Mazda Bongo, with any of these small vehicles, it is like playing a game of Tetris, and you've got to move things from one place to another. So Gary's done a great job at converting this. He's literally made use of every inch of available space. We've got a nice little drawer here, which is tonight's kitchen, which I have been told does often try to slide its way back in. We've got a nice little two-hob gas burner, which is great. On this side, it may look like a drawer, but actually it's not. Very cool. You've got an inverter in here to plug in whatever it is you want to charge. You've got a little fire extinguisher, which fingers crossed, touch some wood somewhere, I won't need tonight. So underneath here, there's a fridge in here. And even better, if I can find a way of opening it, we've got some beverageinos. So like many of the vehicles I've stayed in, this one doesn't have the luxury of AC. However, we do have a nice little 12 volt fan. So you can actually just plug this in down into the inverter down here, which I've just showed you on switch uh, i think the inverter's on why is that not coming on oh fuck me it's going to unclip that 12 volt dc inverter is on leisure battery is on i've got 12.2 volts right we are going to leave that because right now i have no idea anyway there is a fan in here that works which i may or may not use tonight depending on how hot it is so now turn the back of the car i was going to say van but it's definitely not a van the back of the car into the boudoir and where I'm going to be sleeping tonight. Pretty cool, I like it. Slide the passenger seat forward. I grab this plank of wood, which Gary has scribed and built it a certain way so that it fits the shape of the vehicle. So headrest comes off, backrest goes down. And this is the little bit that I'm a bit worried about because I can't remember how he did this earlier. I can't imagine doing this if it was pouring down the rain. <laughs> like that, like that, is it? Maybe it's like this. Must be like that. Yes, here we go, here we go. I did say it was like playing Tetris, you've got to go from one side to the other. <laughs> <laughs> that horn is just absolutely ridiculous. I need to shut this door, and the door kind of holds this plank of wood in place, which is my bed. So to get inside here and actually try and lie down. Whoa, that doesn't feel right to me. That feels like it's just gonna snap, so currently it's flat. <laughs> Oh, everything's moving. Why is this not locked in place? Okay, it's only got one locking position. Well, I would assume that this chair helps to support it. Oh, I'm not convinced about that. I don't know what to do. Did I forget something? It probably would take my weight. This is a bit tricky, this. Whoa, 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 whoa. Oh, I need to shut the bloody <laughs> passenger door, mate. Can you shut the passenger door? Yeah. This definitely is the smallest vehicle <laughs> that I've ever slept in. Or camped in. Apparently, Gary, who's six foot, can just about squeeze in here. As everybody knows, I'm six foot one, six foot three on the dating apps. Tonight should be another cozy, tight 
sleep, that's for sure. Can you shut the door or not? <laughs> Your head's poking out. Right? Try to shut the door. Watch my head. <laughs> Look at my legs, so I'm gonna have to sleep like this. With my legs like that. Although, I do have a mattress to put on here, which should raise the height up, which means I might be able to sleep with my feet on the dashboard. That's the next job, blow up this bloody mattress. Remember, I don't do this for myself. I do it for your entertainment. So if you're enjoying the video, <laughs> please make sure to give the video a like. Here's the pump, which thankfully isn't manual. The only thing I'm a little bit concerned about now is the electrics. Is it gonna work for me? Why the hell did the 12 volt lighter not work? Is it blowing up? I think it is. It probably makes more sense to pump it up when I've actually put it in place. I need to do this quickly so I don't lose air. I cannot imagine doing that at a campsite or at a wild camping spot because, yeah, it's not very quiet. This is home for the night, ladies and gentlemen. With the mattress now in, I'm lacking a little bit more headroom. Oh my God. <laughs> oh, mate, this is not going to be a good sleep. Holy, holy, okay. My feet are definitely touching the dashboard. I mean, it kind of works. Yeah, this is going to be a very sticky, clammy and tight sleep because right now I'm feeling pretty gross and dirty. But right, this is going to be me later today. Feet resting on the dashboard. Oh, my God, it's absolutely roasting in here. But anyway, this is the bedroom. And tonight's luxury. Oh, have you farted? <laughs> no, what is that? This is tonight's boudoir, and where I'm going to be camping and sleeping in a 4x4 Suzuki Jimny. Tonight, the masterpiece of a chicken chorizo paella. All thank you to the recommendation of Julie. If you guys want to chuck me some recipes that you want me to cook in these videos, please make sure to whack those comments down below. And who knows, I could be cooking one of your recipes very, very soon. I'm thinking with the setup like this, again, it's going to be moving one thing from one place to another. So there's going to have to be a bit of a sequence to cook because at the back of the, uh, the car on the back door, there's a nice little small but additional countertop space to do some chopping. But annoyingly, when I bring the drawer out, the door doesn't go any further back, which means I can't use this. So I think I'm going to have to chop everything up first, get that all prepped and then cook afterwards. Whoa, 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 whoa. We are parked a little bit on a slope. Jesus, we really are parked on a slope. Someone's gonna lose a finger in a minute, aren't they? We got some good old Spanish spicy chorizo. Oh, that is a nice bit of chorizo, that. I wanna rid my hands of this sausage flavored fingers, but there's no sink either. Oh, lovely. Final job of cutting up the chicken. Oh, mate. <laughs> The big bad boy of the double stove is out. I've never used one of these before, so. Oh, we're not plugged in, which is why. <laughs> Watch yourself. I don't know what's on or off. I can't tell. Let's just try it and see what happens. Oh, look at my, my boat airs. Oh my God, right. I'm going to take this completely away. Oh, I'm terrified now. I'm going to just test this over here away from the vehicle because I don't want to blow it up. I need to work out here what's off and what's on. <laughs> Mate, stand back. <laughs> Let me just give him a ring. Come on, Gary. Gary, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. You could have told me the stove was absolutely lethal. Oh, <laughs> yeah, I meant to tell you. My that, God, mate. I sh my pants. <laughs> <laughs> so basically, as soon as I've converted to that smaller gas box, once you've got it alight, because I had it adjusted just right. Oh, yeah, there we go. It's this gas out of it now. Got it? Right. That's it. There you go. Good luck, mate. All right, mate. Cheers. Bye-bye, bye-bye. Bye -bye. <laughs> there we go. That definitely was not my fault. Basically, this two hob gas burner should have a massive gas bottle on it, but because it's only got this titchy smaller one, something's been converted, which is why I almost blew the bloody thing up. It's always entertaining. I never know what I'm going to get with these vehicles. <laughs> <laughs> oh! <laughs> oh, mate. 
I'm going home, I'm done with this. Let's try that again, shall we? Release this valve ever so slightly. Turn these both on full, I only need one actually. Right, oh, there we go, okay, it's done. I can finally say, ladies and gentlemen, we're now cooking with gas. Chicken is now semi-cooked, as per the recipe. Peppers, onions, one teaspoon of turmeric, another teaspoon of paprika, a pinch of the world's most expensive spice, saffron. Is that a pinch of saffron? It depends when you... Oh, fuck it, that'll do. It's looking good, it's looking good. Nice colours to it. Couldn't find paella rice. I don't know if it's actually a thing in the UK, so I've just bought traditional risotto rice. We are very, very almost there. Wait for the peas to kind of boil up. This is honestly about three or four kilos of paella. Unos momentos después. I'm never ever cooking paella again <laughs> when I'm going camping. <laughs> I'm almost certain that we started cooking this about half seven. It's now five to nine. One eternity later. Time to plate up and see what it actually tastes like. Chicken chorizo paella. Big thank you to Julie for the recipe. Cooked outside of a half burnt down 4x4 chimney. Oh, that isn't bad at all, you know. That is a recipe and a meal that I can highly recommend. Bon appetit, everybody. It's so small in there. It is absolutely <laughs> tiny. How the hell am I gonna sleep in that? <laughs> I cannot believe I'm gonna be sleeping in here. There is literally no room whatsoever. Somehow I need to get undressed, pillow up there. Yeah, this is without doubt the smallest vehicle that I've ever stayed in. <laughs> this is absolutely brilliant. Window deflectors on there, on the front as well, sleeping bag, blow up mattress, more window deflectors, and I'm just gonna sleep here somehow. Only thing is I've got no windows open or no way of actually ventilating the space in here. Ah, there's a moth! <laughs> Oh man, it's flipping hot in here. Oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my God. Oh. This. Oh. <laughs> oh. I'm crying with laughter, but dying in the inside. Oh, where are the keys? I've not even locked it, but I can't even be bothered to right now. Oh. <laughs> this is me. All set for tonight. I can't sleep fully clothed, it's just too uncomfortable. It is warm in here. I might see if I can get that fan going because without it, I'm gonna be absolutely melting. Uh, oh my God. Oh, I need to check if this fits. This works. <laughs> my night just went from bad to worse. The fan won't work at all. I've tried to plug it into a 12 volt supply, nothing. My feet actually, thankfully, aren't touching the bottom because there's a bit of a distance between my feet and the windscreen. This might be the most uncomfortable, hot, sweaty, disgusting night of my life. Oh, don't ask me how I slept. I think I probably managed to get about two hours sleep, if that. Mate, I've got nothing to say. Oh. <laughs> Look, mate, that was absolutely horrendous. <laughs> I had to wake up at one o'clock in the morning to try and go for a wee. It was raining outside. I strapped the door slightly open so I could get a bit of air in here to breathe. And then I couldn't undo it because I'd done it that time. And then I tried to get on the driver's seat on my knees and pee outside and <laughs> that wasn't gonna work. Yeah, that was horrendous. It's absolutely hammering it down outside now. There's condensation galore in here. Never, ever again. I'm glad there's no one in this car park this morning to witness this. Where's my socks? Oh, there they are. No, can you pass the sock? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm not gonna put that on. Gary, I've got no idea how you do this, to be honest with you. Not a clue. <laughs> this is just absolutely ridiculous. The rain is calming down now, which was good. Have a look that I stayed in there somehow. I ended up charging my phone last night, just plugged it into the inverter, and I think I woke up about two o'clock again with the inverter just going, beep. 
That was a nice wake-up call, wasn't it? There is no toilet in here, so I'm going to have to raft into the bushes to have a whiz. Right, time to uh, get this mattress and uh, pack it all away. Hello. Hello. Oh, the dog's peeing where I've just peed. <laughs> I'm going to have to go back and mark my territory. The final part to the jigsaw puzzle. Oh, I've gone from my five star luxury bedroom experience to now ready to drive off again because we're all packed away. It's time to say goodbye to the Jimny and last night's accommodation. And we're actually gonna end today's video by rating the vehicles in five different categories. Stealthiness, quirkiness, comfort, driving experience, and the cooking experience. In terms of the driving experience for this one, it's gotta be a two out of five because the thing seemed to drive itself. Whoa, look at that. Oh, sugar ticks, almighty. The next category for these vehicles is comfort. <laughs> I don't know if I need to say too much about that. In terms of the overall comfort, the living situation, the sleeping situation, for me, it gets a one out of five. So category number three is the stealthiness of the vehicle. This one is actually a bit of an in-between. It is stealthy, but also it isn't stealthy. It is because you wouldn't expect someone to be sleeping in here, but it isn't because of the way that it looks. So I'm gonna give that a three star. Next one, cooking facilities, considering I almost burnt myself down and the bloody chimney. So we'll go for two. And finally, the last category, quirkiness. For me, this is a very quirky vehicle. The massive tires, the fact that it genuinely looks like a toy car. I'm gonna give that a four out of five. Oh, it's time to say hasta luego to the little Jimny. Hopefully you guys have enjoyed this video as much as I have semi-enjoyed staying in it and experiencing it. This week's comment of the week comes from at Lovelock, who says, nice nips, cupcake. Make sure to subscribe, make sure to drop a comment down below, and I will see you in next week's video. Bye-bye.